Good evening, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and apparently people really like these redistricting videos, and maybe it's actually kind of an important thing to do. I know I did a little bit of a review of what each state might actually do, but I think going a little bit more methodical and trying to make the districts look somewhat realistic is probably a good idea. So one thing that I want to do, or and what I'm trying to do with this one was look at what Texas what what Texas's map might look like in the future. Um, given that they have to find a way to add three additional districts, and the Texas Republican Party is going to try and make those districts as favorable to them as possible, um, as well as maybe eliminate. Um, <clears throat> some currently existing Democratic seats. And I decided to try and make it easier for me to do this. Um, I want to see if I improved it, so. All right, let me see if I can find it. There you go. So there's 23 Republicans and 13 Democrats. Let's flip this over to the partisan lean. Now this is with the um, <clears throat> the President 2016 data. We'll see what it looks like with the President 2020 data whenever that comes out. But I think there's that's one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, seven, eight, nine districts right there. And Dallas is down to quite literally one Democratic district. And the Republican districts actually aren't all that unsafe, except for, I think, this one right here. <laughs> that one's a little unsafe. But if we take it off, and by the way, this is, I think, closer to where uh, Texas is in terms of partisanship. But this map gets terribly scary for Democrats when you change the compile when you change it because that district is a lot less democratic and then we look at I think this is the last time corn was up you flip one seat so there's 10 Democratic districts. What was that, Senator 2014? Yeah. Flip this district, too. <laughs> so that would take the Democrats down a tremendous amount. Um, and then President 20. There we go. And that's, that's where you would expect it. Now, like I said, I think this is closer to where Texas is going to be in terms of its partisanship as moving forward. Um, realistically, the Democrats could hope to compete in, in my opinion, they could realistically hope to compete in one, two, in a few seats, but I'm not sure it'd be enough, especially with the fact that the Texas GOP is actually not incompetent. I, I would expect the... I would expect uh, Republicans to hold on to a sizable majority uh, moving forward. Now, there are some differences, but, and let's actually turn off the partisan lean of the districts, flip up the background map, and let's talk a little bit about some areas. Um, so, obviously, El Paso gets its own district. It's just that large. Um, the Rio Grande Valley gets quite a few, but 
it's normal. You would think it'd be fairly difficult to split it up, and that's what the Texas GOP tried with the three districts that you know snake their way through there, and then they have one that kind of does its own stuff in Brownsville. But as you can see, I actually managed to get a GOP district there. And, yeah. Um, then, of course, you've got San Antonio being, you know, in its own little weird way. Um, and I managed to split Austin up real well, in my opinion. And if we slide on over to Houston, this is another. Uh, this is another area I managed to split up very nicely. What is it? One. I think it was one, two, three. I think. Yeah, one, two, three Democratic districts right there. Um, that said, this one is sliding towards the Democrats because this part of Houston is probably not going to stay oh, red for very long. Um, but yeah, I did. It, it is a definitely egregious map if you want to talk about fairness. Um, I changed up a few districts. Um, for example, here we go splitting Dallas up significantly. And the Dallas-Fort Worth area is pretty interesting. Yes, it, it, some areas are definitely trending towards the Democrats, definitely suburb areas of Fort Worth and Dallas, but there's a surprisingly large amount of Republicans that are still there, and that allows you to do some really weird districts to split everything up. And that also includes... Uh, these two counties up here and this very small county over here, Rockwall, I think. And of course, Panhandle gets one district, and technically two districts. But you can tell that the population centers are, well, El Paso gets one district, but the real population centers are San Antonio, Austin, this little corridor here, Houston, and Dallas, Fort Worth. And the Gulf Coast has a lot of people, and East Texas has a lot of people. And basically, I at some point, I was trying to keep districts somewhat where they are in real life, but I kind of gave up. Uh, fairly quickly because that was, yeah, I was losing my mind, especially trying to figure out, okay, this district is here. Let's wiggle that a little bit, see if we can get that. So instead, uh, once I reached a certain point, I think it was like halfway through, I said, you know what, the rest of the districts are going to draw themselves at this point. And they kind of did. Um, there were a few decisions I, it, I didn't like having to make. For example, Corpus Christi is in a blue district, even though this area tends to vote, you know, basically everything north of this line tends to be more Republican. But it's not that blue of a district. Uh, let's turn the partisan lean back on, and we'll go ahead and look at the statistics. Why not? And yes, there are a lot of vaguely competitive districts. Uh, let's find... So, 17 fall within the supposedly competitive range, though some I'd be hard-pressed to call them truly competitive. And from 
but there's also a lot that I would definitely describe as competitive. And if we go back to the map, we can kind of see why these districts are the way they are. I turn that off. And we highlight that. As you can probably guess, yeah. So we turn that up, and well, it's a Rio Grande Valley. We change that up, and East Texas, that's where that is, and especially if we look at Houston. And Dallas Fort Worth. And then we go here, and yeah, that one is expected. And you could say, well, isn't that the reason why it's, you know, that way? That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. And this basically says what the majority is in that precinct. Now you could maybe use this to draw a better map than I have in terms of purely getting it. But one of the things I was trying to do was... One of the things I was trying to do is somewhat future-proof. That's why I chose such a Democratic heavy sample. I would have chosen uh, the Senate 2018 if I could because it would have been a better, it would have led to a mm, probably leading to a better future-proofing, basically saying, listen, there are certain trends that are going on. Let's prevent, or, you know, let's stop them. Anyway. I want to thank everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed. A like, a comment, and subscription is greatly appreciated. And I hope uh, you all enjoyed. And I'll see you all next time. Take it easy. Have a very nice evening. Bye-bye.